In today's video, we're going to introduce you to the fascinating histories of the incredible Belgian Malinois. Welcome back to the Fenrir Malinois Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist. I'm the founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could ever want to know about the incredible Belgian Malinois, then how you can become a high-level canine leader capable of raising perfect Malinois companions. So if you love the Malinois as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a future Belgian Malinois video. So then, let's dive into today's video and we'll tell you all about the history behind one of the world's most glorious dog breeds. So first of all, did you know that the Malinois is actually one out of four variants of the Belgian Shepherd? And the only thing that differentiates these variations is the variants in their coat. It was Professor Adolphe Rule, a Belgian veterinarian, who described the breed as a medium-sized square dog with well-set triangle ears and dark brown eyes. The breed standard was created about a year after he gathered about 100 dogs in 1891, but found them to be too different. He advised breeders to breed their dogs to other dogs with similar coats regardless of colour, and this plan happened to work out really, really well. A standard was formed in 1892, and in May the same year, the first specialty show took place, and that's where the Belgian Shepherd began its journey towards uniformity. It was the Club de Chien de Burger Belge that asked the Society Royal St. Herbert for breed status, but their first request was denied. In 1901, however, the Belgian Shepherd dog was finally recognised as an official breed. Now, as a result of the work towards creating the Belgian Shepherd, numerous clubs were founded in Belgium. Examples of these are the Burger Belge Club in 1898, the Club de Chien de Burger Belge, the Kennel Club Belge, both 1908, the Society Royal St. Herbert, which is a Belgian equivalent of the American Kennel Club. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels and maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me that's the place for you so there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there now it may come as a surprise to you that these four variations of a breed was originally used as sheep herders their main task was herding and it wasn't until they were imported to the US around 1911 that people opened their eyes to the Belgian Shepherd's capability and started using these brilliant dogs in the New York police force. Later during World War I, the Malinois was used in the military and since then they have developed to be the hardcore working dog that people know and love today. If there is one person to take a lot of credit for the creation of the Malinois, it is a shepherd from Laken named Adrian Janssens. Already in 1885, he got himself a pale fawn and rough-haired dog called Voss from a cattle dealer in northern Belgium. Voss was used for herding Johnson's flock, but also to mate him to a short-haired brindle brown dog called Lise de Laken. As time went by, the need for herding dogs decreased in Belgium, and the Belgian Shepherd were on their way of losing their use. Now that's when a man named Louis, who is known as one of the godfathers of the Malinois, suggested that the breed should be tested for intelligence, obedience and loyalty. The first test was held on July 12th in 1903 and was won by him and his Malinois, Coravant Optival. This led to new tasks for the Malinois and the rest of the Belgian Shepherds. They were now used for guarding and draft dogs. In the beginning of the 20th century, they were used by the Belgian police, and before World War II, international police dog trials became very, very popular all around Europe. The Belgian Shepherds did so extremely well in these trials and were used during the war in a number of roles, including messenger dogs, Red Cross dogs, ambulance cart dogs, and sometimes, it's been said, even light machine gun cart dogs. The Belgian Shepherds were first imported to Britain, Netherlands, France, Switzerland, Canada, the US, Argentina and Brazil. Now this happened mainly during the 1920s and 30s, but already in the 1911 the first two Malinois and two Gronendales were registered at the American Kennel Club as German Sheepdogs. 
Between the First and the Second World War, the Malinois lost in popularity, mainly because nobody could afford breeding their dogs. The Belgian Sheepdog Club of America ceased to exist for these reasons. The numbers of Belgian Shepherds were so low that the American Kennel Club had to put them in the miscellaneous class at the American Kennel Club shows during the 30s and 40s. Now, luckily, in 1949, a new Belgian Sheepdog Club of America was formed in Indiana, and a man named John Cowley imported two Malinois and started his kennel. His work made the breed popular again, and by the 1960s, more people were breeding and showing Malinois. And in 1992, the club received AKC Parent Club status. Since then, the Malinois has made itself known for its extreme use in hardcore working environments, like extreme military roles, police work, drug detection agencies, drug search and rescue, and personal protection roles. And this has resulted in many imports to the US for the last several years. Now, to end the fascinating history of the Malinois and the rest of the Belgian Shepherds, a fun fact is that still to this day in Belgium, the actual breed of a puppy is decided when it's born. It all depends on the coat, since that really is the only different variations between the four types of Belgian Shepherd. Now, something that we would love to look into more is how these variations differ mentality-wise, and if it matters, where in the world they were born. That is, how far from their home country they are, and how far away from those original lines that makes them but that is definitely material for another video so if you want to see that don't forget to subscribe turn on the notification videos we've got two dedicated Belgian Malinois videos coming to this channel every single week and I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femre Belgian Malinois show